If there was the remains of a craft and bodies, where would that be located? If a flying saucer with alien bodies was recovered at Roswell, Ben Smith hopes that there still could be evidence at the site where the object might have come to rest. The search for the Holy Grail, as we would call it, continues. Yeah. Roswell, the first witness, is a three-part series on the History Channel focusing on a personal diary of the per first person to investigate the wreckage in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947 of a U.S. Army Air Force balloon crash. For years, conspiracy theorists and believers have put forth the idea that it was actually a UFO that crashed at that site in 1947. Don Schmidt is the author of five books and hundreds of articles about UFOs, and he's a part of the team on the show. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Larry and Robin. Thank you for having me. So, to my knowledge, there's never been any um, foreign alien material or a body obtained. So, what evidence is driving people to believe that such a thing e exists? Well, certainly the preponderance of eyewitness testimony, including, sadly, more and more deathbed confessions, all uh, describing that uh, what indeed did happen was something of an unearthly nature. We have to keep in mind that the uh, Roswell Army Airfield at that time actually put out a press release where they claimed they had captured the real thing. And then five hours later, they explained it away as just a weather balloon device, which still, as you mentioned, is the official government position after all this time. But short of the witnesses, it's one of the reasons we keep looking for the documentation. We look for other evidence, archaeological work that we've done at the site and searching through the archives, presidential libraries, that type of thing. Uh, anything that will keep pointing us and steering us towards the actual truth to what happened back at that time. So let's talk about what new evidence was uncovered. You have a diary of the first investigator uh, provided to you by his grandchildren. And what did you find in that? Well, that is still in investigation and what they're looking for. Be because he was an intelligence officer. He was, in fact, the number one intelligence officer in the U.S. military at that time because he was a member of the 509th Bomb Group, which was the first atomic bomb squadron in the world at that time. So they're looking now as far as cryptologists, as far as any coding, anything that might suggest more than what was actually written by him at that time because he was under strict as far as a security uh, oaths at that time. So let's take a step back from this. If you were aliens and you had this advanced technology that allowed you to come here, couldn't you also monitor what we were doing without landing a silver saucer in a cornfield? Well, it's interesting. Well, it wasn't a cornfield. It was actually. Well, a, I'm a, just a, saying as a generic a, statement. Right, 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 right. Uh, yeah, well, certainly. And in fact, uh, many of the researchers at that time suggested, including Dr. Lincoln La Paz, who was the famous meteor expert, that these were unmanned probes, that these were just investigating our most secure military uh, installations at that time. It's uh, ironic that the first atomic bomb was detonated in New Mexico just two years before and all the captured German B-2 rockets were being tested at the White Sands Proving Grounds in New Mexico. So New Mexico was the hotbed of military research at that time. And according to the government's own research records, there were more UFO sightings in New Mexico than anywhere else at that time. It was as though they were checking out our military potential. So you raise a good question. Are we dealing with unmanned probes or are they actually... Uh, the crew the pilots that are on board these craft. So the beginning before that we started talking to you, we showed a clip from the show. So as you going out to the actual site, which I'm sure has been tread over a million times, did you find anything new? Well, actually, it hasn't been. We kept it very secret, oh. and mainly because it's uh, privately owned. And so we've been very respectful and very professional as to the amount of work being done there. But the debris field specifically, there have been a number of fragments that have been recovered of uh, mostly aluminum, but they also contain molybdenum, which is a hardening agent strictly for steel, not aluminum. And yet there it is. It shouldn't be there. And in some of the fragments, it's as high as 3%. Now, this doesn't prove it's extraterrestrial, 
but nonetheless, it's an alloy that is not common here on Earth. So we keep looking, but I can assure both of you, we're not finding fragments of balloons, of aircraft of any sort, of rockets. And so the hunt will continue because in the face of the declining numbers of witnesses with the World War II generation now quickly passing away, we are left to search documents and look for the physical remains, the physical evidence. All right, well, thanks, Don Roswell. The first witness is airing Saturdays on the History Channel. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Larry and Robin. Take, Take care. care.